humble mug. Welcome to the Humble Lounge, where we sit down to talk a little more casually about certain topics that come to mind from time to time on this gaming journey. Today, I want to talk about secondhand nostalgia, which is a topic I could honestly make several videos about. It's been on my mind a lot over the last year or so in particular because a lot of my buying habits have been for games and consoles that I have secondhand nostalgia for. But I know you're probably asking, what the heck is secondhand nostalgia? Well, it's the term I like to use for basically anything that you never experienced in the past or perhaps merely only heard of or were loosely aware of in the past that you're experiencing now. And how this thing that you're experiencing now takes you back to a time you feel nostalgic for for some reason, even though you never previously interacted with the object in this manner during that time. For example, maybe you've just started watching Malcolm in the Middle and Sabrina the Teenage Witch for the first time, and though you can recall maybe seeing an episode or two of these shows in the past, and you know what these shows are, you didn't actually watch them during that time period. But watching it now, it's like you're experiencing this cool little psychological handoff between your earlier self and your current, and all of a sudden you're enveloped in those turn of the century media vibes, and though you never watched Malcolm or Sabrina before really, watching it now, it's like you knew them all along. I have really intense nostalgia for certain games I never played before, and similar to how I've been enjoying Malcolm and Sabrina lately, I've been indulging in false past memories with gaming as well. I don't know how to describe it exactly, so I'm hoping that you can just kind of hear me out and relate to this. Growing up, I had no idea that a Sega Dreamcast existed or what it even was. I had just one friend from my childhood who actually had one of those systems that I'm aware of, but I didn't know about that until years later. Everyone I knew when I was a kid either had a Nintendo 64, a PlayStation 1, PS2, GameCube, or Xbox, and when the 360, PS3, and Wii rolled around, we kept moving forward. So it wasn't until my late 20s that I even started playing any Dreamcast games. And there's just something about the music and aesthetics of Phantasy Star Online that take me back to this certain place emotionally. I suddenly found myself wanting to experience everything Dreamcast. I listen to chill Dreamcast mixes all the time when I'm writing. I know one day I will own a Dreamcast, but for now I just do my best to find ports of Dreamcast games on the systems I have, and I try to find games that feel like that era of Sega now. I picked up a PlayStation 3 recently, another system I never owned growing up, and through soft modding I can play games like Outrun 2006 Coast to Coast, and that game just feels like a natural extension of the Dreamcast era all over again to me. Those Sega blue skies are just simply incredible to see. And I guess I should go ahead and mention here too that I've never had a Master System, Genesis, or Saturn growing up either. When it comes to the PlayStation 2, again with my PS3 Slim, I'm finally diving into games I was always curious about, saw in passing, or saw at a friend's house, and so playing them now puts me in this weird headspace where I'm suddenly back in 2001, even though in 2001 I never knew anything about Maximo Ghost to Glory, save for this one ad I saw in a magazine that for some reason burned into my brain where all of these years later, the synapses still fire off brightly and intensely. I wish I could retain more practical knowledge in the way that I can with random imagery like this, but something about those hearts on a pair of undies just really impacted me, I guess. I'm also now experiencing Asterix and Obelix, which, while they never received glowing reviews at the time, I've got some trace memory of this game somewhere deep in the annals of my mind. I saw it get a mention in a Metal Jesus Rocks video, and I had to pause it because I was like, where has this been all of my life? I swear I recognize this. There's gotta be a folder and a filing cabinet somewhere in the back of my back brain, probably, which is apparently used for motor control, so that's probably why I haven't found it yet, but I swear I remember this game somehow, and instead of combing through the files, I just decided to jump into the game now, and yeah, it's awesome. It's an early 2000s platformer with beat-em-up elements set in a cartoony setting, and it's like this distant cousin to Wario World. Which which was another game I only got to play when I went to a certain family member's house. And playing this game now makes me want so badly a Wario World style game where you control Wario and Waluigi and they get into these puzzle platforming shenanigans due to inevitable separation and it's rife with gags and hijinks thanks to these inherently goofy characters. Please, Nintendo, please. I have vivid recollections of watching a friend of mine absolutely decimate Dante's Inferno. And before I got my Xbox One, I played it quite a bit myself on my Vita a year or two ago. I found a 360 copy of the game recently, and thankfully it's backwards compatible. And being that the 360 version of the game is the one my good friend played all those years ago, I'm so excited to dive into it. 
Hydro Thunder Hurricane released 14 years ago, but when I was a kid, I only knew of the original that I played on my Nintendo 64. So playing this Xbox Live Arcade only sequel that's thankfully still available on modern Xboxes feels like this fever dream turned to reality. I still think this game looks beautiful and it's everything I would have ever wanted from a Hydro Thunder game. That was insane. This is crazy. As you can probably guess based on the games and systems I've laid out for you that I haven't played, you might be able to figure out what company's consoles I did grow up with and yeah, by and large, I was a Nintendo kid. I did have a PlayStation 1 for a very short period of time but the disk drive broke and that'll be a story for another day. I had an Xbox and an Xbox 360 but those consoles basically got adopted by my brother because I was still too busy with the Nintendo 64 and the Wii. Even then though, there are still so many games, even first party Nintendo games, I'm just now experiencing. My friend GameCube Galaxy, best GameCube channel on the net by the way, posted about the 20 year anniversary of 1080 Avalanche last December and I played it for the first time that night and again, it feels like this game I've known all of my life. Even the music, though I've heard see through before, I swear I've never heard their song Fine Again until now, and it sounds like this song that I should have known or that feels familiar, but it's not. I still play this game every now and then and I think it's got some of the best vibes out there, I mean just look at this. So this video is meant to be just kind of an introduction to the topic, some killer games that I never knew or only sort of knew but am now getting very acquainted with. I think the technical term for secondhand nostalgia is animoia, but Google still gives me red squiggly lines for that word and secondhand nostalgia feels more cozy so that's what I'm going to roll with. Anyways, if you have any recommendations for me based on the games I've talked about, feel free to shout them out below. And if there are any games you feel secondhand nostalgia for that take you back to a place you've never been, tell me about it. I've been seriously considering doing reviews of classic games that I'm only just now playing for the first time and giving my perspective on them, and there are so many more games and whole consoles that I have secondhand nostalgia for that I've not talked about here, so if that's something you're interested in, stick around and subscribe. And by the way, nothing too sappy, but I just wanted to give a sincere thank you to you all for all of the support on the video about my brother. I really felt the love and it meant the world to me. I wanted that video to do well because I want people to know about his story and because I think it has the potential to help people and thanks to you guys, I feel like I was able to accomplish that. I mentioned GameCube Galaxy earlier when I was talking about 1080 Avalanche and he unfortunately went through something similar to me with his brother. He made a video called A Special Tribute and I remember exactly where I was the day that video came out and I watched it and how it made me feel. I think if it weren't for my knowledge of the existence of his video, I wouldn't have had the strength to make my own video or how to contextualize it. So I wanted to give a major shout out to Marcello as well. Of course, a link to his videos in the description below. Anyways, that's all I've got for you right now but I'm sure this secondhand nostalgia topic will certainly resurface many times over the life of this channel. If you're still here, thanks so much for chilling with me in the lounge and as always, stay humble.